Varnum Town is a quiet, small fishing village in Brunswick County, North Carolina with a crazy drug running past, tying its residents to one of the most notorious drug dealers ever. It's about to be revealed worldwide in lots of media. Hi everybody, John Daly here with Carolina Buzz, and if you live in or visit the booming region of Brunswick County, you'll soon be learning a lot about Varnum Town's nefarious history. I made this, I've been home 24 years after from prison, you know what I mean. Uh -huh. I did 10 and a half years. We visited with one of the main characters, Dale Varnum, whose earlier relatives founded Varnum Town, and today he runs this eye-popping collectibles venue called Fort Apache that contains some of his own dark history. The book came out. It's about you. Are you comfortable with it? Yeah, I am. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm here. I'm here today for a reason or I wouldn't be here. Now we also sat down with the author of that new book that reveals the intricate web that is Dale Varnum and Varnum Town. The book is called My Right Hand to Goodness, The Life and Times of Crazy Dale Varnum, which will be published March 12th, 2024. Now we had a chance to preview the book, which is also the basis of a new podcast called Varnum Town, hosted by Twin Peaks star Kyle McLaughlin and investigative reporter Josh Davis, which is equally riveting. And there appears to be a TV or streaming series about Varnum Town in the works as well. Now we begin our coverage here with the author Lynn Cook Betts, who moved to nearby Lockwood Folly a decade ago, knowing little but being very curious about this secluded region. And when I heard that shrimp boats were not only carrying shrimp, back in the um, 70s through the 90s, they were always also carrying nefarious cargo. I became very intrigued. Now that uh, intrigue grew each time she drove past Fort Apache. Uh, I would say to Tom, my husband, I would say, I want to meet the mind behind this place. So they stopped in to view the wild collectibles along with old newspaper articles. Little did she know the Dale Varnum show had begun. And then behind a black curtain, a man came out and uh, she said, Here's Dale, Dale Varnum. Dale Varnum, well, he was the guy in the headlines of those newspaper articles. Hmm, that's pretty interesting. Dale took Lynn and her husband on a guided tour of his assembled town of Fort Apache, loaded with old Hollywood and Southern memorabilia, some would say junk, mixed in with macabre horror, lots of commodes, and plenty of jokes. He not only told about how he created Fort Apache, which was interesting, but he told about his history as a drug kingpin here in these parts, um, who uh, talks about the old Dale and the new Dale, and how between the two Dales, uh, him being the new Dale now, were 10 and a half years that he called vacation, that most of us call prison. So it all fit together, the shrimp boats carrying drugs out there in the water and learning more about that, and Dale over at Fort Apache as a drug kingpin. So it all fit together. And therein laid the story that I started writing about. Uh, it took me about nine years to do the research on the book and uh, learn more about it, talk to hundreds of people, um, talk to or learned so much through the newspaper articles and, uh, and the other resources, court records and uh, photographs and other kinds of resources that people would bring to me to look at. Now what makes this book so intriguing is the secluded culture and history not only with the Varnum family but in the town of only about 300 people back in the 1980s who went into business with the notorious drug kingpin Pablo Escobar. It's about a history that to me uh, never existed in any other place. It's about a history of God-fearing Southern people, poor people, poor people. And in fact, back in the in 1970s, I read a, a census that in 1970, I believe it was, that about 20% of the population here in Brunswick County lived in substandard housing. So these were very poor people. How they had an opportunity to fulfill dreams, at least through uh, ways, uh, albeit nefarious and illegal, um, they were able to fulfill their dreams and buy things, buy homes and cars and boats and uh, all the trappings of people who could afford that. 
and they were able to do that and somehow left the values that they had um, and as as this place evolved to the second busiest port of entry for illegal drugs on the eastern seaboard only second to Miami so this little town of 300 people and and you would have been on the short list had you not been involved in one way or another how this this community was transformed and Dale being at the center of all of it now, as you heard at the beginning, Dale went to prison for 10 plus years after originally turning state's evidence that led to many locals going to prison. Do you, do you worry at all about the people who were involved who maybe had to go to prison? I know you did, but I yeah. mean, do you worry about it? I mean, do you have, do you have fears? No, I do not. You know what I'm trying to tell you? I don't have no, there's no blood on these hands, none at all. You know, I had no blood on my hands or nothing. You know what I mean? And I, I just thank the good Lord because I wouldn't be here today if it weren't to, where I could help people and do things for the greatest, you know, in His glory. Now, we know so many of you summer here for the beaches, the views, and the golf. You should add the Odyssey that is Varnum Town to your list by listening to the podcast series and reading Lynn's book in the future. Now, in future segments here, we will examine the characters, the intrigue, the conspiracy theories and the effects on current day Brunswick County. Keep it tuned here to Carolina Buzz on Wingding TV's business channel, offering businesses their own shows, along with cutting edge social media and digital marketing with a worldwide reach of millions. Check it out and see if we can help your business. And stay tuned here for more on Varnum Town here on the Carolina Buzz.